Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. I recently went to the 7th annual San Diego Comic Fest. Let's check out what I got. Be sure to check the description of the video to jump to different chapters. Well, first of all, what is the San Diego Comic Fest? This is the smaller, more intimate Comic Con, hearkening back to the days of old when these uh, conventions were not so grand and epic. If you've ever been to San Diego Comic Con, you know that it's a big, big endeavor with lots and lots of people, lots and lots of lines, drama and such. Well, if you want the smaller, more intimate experience of the old days, San Diego Comic Fest is here for you. This is the seventh annual one. I've gone to two of them, the 2017 one and the 2019. These were held at the Four Points Sheraton in Kearney Mesa, although it jumps around a little bit. The one from last year was somewhere else and I didn't get a chance to go. But this one uh, this year and two years ago was at the Sheraton Hotel, so I went. Okay, here's some of the things that I got. So I got a badge. Uh, kind of interesting that someone else's name on it and then they put mine. Well, they have themes. This was the celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Now, as a graphic designer, I have degree in graphic design, uh, it's tormenting me. Moon land ing. That should go to the next line. That is known as an orphan. Or is it a widow? I forget. When science fiction became fact. Now, capitalize, 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 but no capitalize? Okay, again, nitpicking. It's what I do. San Diego Comic Fest 2019. Uh, VM Campos. That's me. Let's see what's on the back here acceptance of this pass is an agreement blah 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 this is the same thing as any convention it's unlawful to duplicate or resell etc so if you're interested in the convention check out their website but this was the lanyard got it on that day it was very affordable if you want to go all three days thursday friday saturday and sunday okay all four days thursday friday saturday and sunday it was only 50 dollars i believe um thursday was like a reception and then friday saturday and sunday were actual uh, you know, days. And what was there were panels, a dealer's room, uh, artist alley, and so forth. Let's take a quick look through the souvenir book. Uh, you might not be able to see it on the camera, but unfortunately the print quality is a little off. And again, I don't want to uh, nitpick and dissuade you from going. It was cool. I enjoyed it. Spoiler alert. It's just that these little, you know, these little things are kind of rough around the edges. Well, it, they might perfect it on, on year eight. So there's a welcome message. You can pause it and read it yourself. Uh, there's the various hours, the staff. Again, pause it, give props to everyone involved who came to the artist alleys and thanks and other volunteers. It went very smoothly. Look at this, Sergio Aragones was one of the guest of honors. One of the biggest names in the world of comics. He's worked in Mad Magazine, Grew. He's been at every comic con for like decades. He was at Comic Fest, which lends it a great air of legitimacy, which is amazing. Cool here, Alan Bellman, a uh, golden age uh, comic artist. He worked on Captain America way back in the day. So um, really cool. He was there with his wife. She was wearing an adorable uh, Wonder Woman tiara. Here's Larry David, uh, just kidding. That's uh, science fiction guest of honor, William Nolan. Fan guest, Bill Shelley. So this is the usual, oh, Bud Plant was there. Uh, this is the usual sort of like what was going on, who was there. You can pause and read these if you'd like. And who else? Willie Ito, Kelly, uh, Joe Kelly, etc. Floyd Norman, I've seen him at San Diego Comic-Con drawing at the Quick Draw panel, really cool artist. Mark Baudet, son of Von Baudet, classic uh, underground comics artist. This is the son. Uh, William Stout, Shannon Wheeler from Too Much Coffee Man. I used to see him all the time. He's still there at San Diego Comic-Con. Trina Robbins, one of the most important names in uh, underground comics and feminist comics. She was there. Mark Evanier, he's at everything. He was also at the fest. Um, we've got a bunch of doctors doing a bunch of great uh, panels. International comics uh, artists uh, from Japan and Mexico, so we see here Luis Fernando, etc. Political cartoonist, 
Lalo Alcazar was there. He does, uh, sorry, Lalo Alcaraz. He was there from his uh, Cucaracha and uh, cultural advisor to Disney Pixar. Nice. Other guests. In memoriam of Baton Lash. Uh, he died recently, unfortunately, so little memorial on him. Uh, they had the theme of, um, you know, space. And they had the classic uh, voyage to the moon, the big old moon in that silent film uh, on the in that silent film from the Lumiere brothers. That movie is probably a hundred years old at least now. Uh, one of the first space travel movies from France or the whole world. And uh, a final thing: don't forget to join us uh, next year. Let's see what is this? Oh, a WhoCon. So if you're into Doctor Who, there's a WhoCon this year at the Four Point Sheraton. And then next year. Now, again, uh, I don't want to nitpick. It was a fun event, but uh, this torments me. Be sure to return next year when we will be cele celebrating the 100th anniver anniver anniversary. Is this. Uh, okay. So you get the idea. But they're celebrating Harry Hausen and uh, Ray Bradbury next year. Very nice. I wonder if it's also at the Sheraton or not. I hope it is, because it's a lot easier for me to get to. And here's the various program guides. Again, uh, you can uh, pause it and read this, but there's things like the Cthulhu Mythos. It turns 100. There's the Bernard uh, Kriegstein Master of Design. And it's the usual sort of thing. I didn't get to go to any panels. I, I got there a little bit late. I only went one day, but it was enjoyable. A first glimpse at a new, extremely rare galaxy by Dr. Mutlu Pakdil. And what else? Caesar versus Dragonfly, our next mission to the outer solar system. Uh, co uh, weapons policy, harassment policy. And then explanation of all of the uh, various events. If you want to see this in detail, send me an email uh, and I'll kind of show you what's there. I'll scan it and stuff. But, you know, it's a bunch of uh, interesting things. Star Trek Disney Animation and Avatar, The Last Airbender, the movie Art of Ricardo Delgado. So pretty cool stuff. And then at the end, we've got a map of the venue. It was at the sh uh, at the Four Points, um, Sheraton Four Points. So main entrance, art exhibit over here, dealer's room, and so forth. So pretty cool. All right, so let's see what I got. I didn't get that many items. I only got three comics. The, one, the time I went uh, a few years ago, uh, go, uh, click up here to watch my video from last time. I got more things, but that's okay. I, I got some cool comics that I was looking for uh, that I was really interested in, so let's check them out. Okay, the first comic that I got was Chilling Adventures in Sorcery, as told by Sabrina. This is an Archie comic from 1972. 20 cents, September number one. This is Archie Comics's version of like Tales from the Crypt. That sort of horror anthology, but in the cute Archie style of the time. Look at that cute zombie breaking through. And look at that. Behold the beast. He's so cute. This is right up my alley because I like to draw cute stuff. And even that scary monster, he's not really that scared. And here we have Plus the Boy Who Cried Vampire Assignment in Fear. Let's take a quick look through the book. Uh, I have not opened it yet. And I got it uh, for a good price, less than that actually. And uh, I'm happy with it. Uh, kind of, uh, I was looking for some older comics to add to my collection, just stuff that's not that well known, and uh, this fits the bill perfectly. So let's open it up and take a little look. All right, so the cover is looking really nice. Uh, don't see any negativity really in the cover. I guess a little bit down here, but okay, let's see what's inside. Actually, one more thing. Mmm, it's got the classic comic smell. I love that. All right. So I don't know anything what's in this book. I just know it's an Archie book with a focus on Sabrina Spellman. So Behold the Beast, classic prizes, prizes or cash. Uh, free sample cards, earn $100 a box. And uh, yeah, it's a Tales from the Crypt, but it's like a juvenile ver version. And uh-oh, the... The beast is in love with the blind girl, and she's uh, drowning, in, drowning in her uh, in the pool and such. But he comes to save her, and oh no! Luckily, he saved her. But oh, she's crying. The beast died to save her. Tragic. 
So we got some posters. Who's in here that's good? Anne Margaret, Lee Majors, Lost in Space, William Shatner. Any 14 of these hit records for only 286. Is this Columbia? This is Columbia House. They were still doing this in the 90s when I got suckered into Columbia House, but they were 99 cents in my day. And here they're 286. What a ripoff. But you'll be able to get Santana, uh, The Carpenters, Black Sabbath. Uh, puzzle, find Al. Okay, go ahead and find him. Be the boy who cried vampire. So creative team, I'm not quite seeing. Did I, did I skip it? Who was the creative team on this one? It must be, you know, the house artists that they didn't really get any credit for. Um, you know, it's the classic Archie style of the 70s. Not quite Dan DiCarlo, but I guess, yeah, Dan DiCarlo style, or what was the other big name in Archie Comics of the time? Uh, the newsprint is, uh, is yellowed uh, with age, and uh, yeah, it's a horror Archie comic. Oh, there's the classic Archie. Look at um, Betty's classic bangs over here. Oh my god, look at that expression. Um, I'll tell, I'll tell, leave me alone, or I'll tell. And who's going to believe you now? And they're laughing at him because he got ripped to shreds. So here we have the foot and a half high Archie. So you can buy your own Archie with classic bell bottoms of the age. And lastly, Assignment in Fear. Uh, classic Sabrina with her go-go boots and uh, mini skirt. So a bunch of stuff happening. Stop teasing me, Billy. Um, okay, so someone turns into a wretched zombie, ghoul sort of thing. Arg sob. Everyone sobs in the comics. I love it. And we've got a very dire looking Sabrina and uh, join me in bed. Interesting. Reward for this coin. If you find this coin, it could be worth $11,000. Uh, real hot talent. This is kind of cool. You can... Uh, be this uh, juggling is what I wish I could have done. Who wrote this? Um, uh, no one is credited. Oh my god, look at this guy's totally dead. Yes, this is an Archie comic. This is Quick Justice. Well, they say good lawmen never die, they just hang around. So he died in the painting. Hilarious. And then we've got Curiosity Kills, Venus Flytrap, oh, and the Sea Monkeys. So how many stories is that? That's like five stories for the price of... This was 25 cents or 20 cents? Let's see that again. This was 20 cents. 20 cents for so many stories. Amazing. Comics should try that again. Uh, one price for a bunch of stories. Anthologies. But I guess anthologies don't really sell like they used to. And then that's it there. So what's the punchline? And a ghost-like chuckle. And a ghost-like chuckle would be her would be whispered in the wind don't worry luke boy the box served its purpose i guess i should have read it you can manage the majors with stratomatic baseball sales leadership club and then finally do you need extra money a hundred dollars it costs you nothing to try to try a hundred dollars is yours try to uh, uh contact the cheerful card company on white plains new york okay so this was Chilling Adventures in Sorcery, number one. This series went for about seven issues. Issues one and two featured Sabrina. Then starting with three, they just became uh, regular Chilling Adventures in Sorcery. And instead of Archie series, it was Red Circle Comics. And so uh, Sabrina was removed from it and it became more realistic art instead of the Archie style. But still, Tales from the Crypt sort of comics from Archie Comics. Next up, we've got Heroes, Inc. presents Canon. This is 15 cents from 1969. And what's this? Copyright Wally Wood. Yes, this is a self-published comic from Wally Wood, famous artist of the 60s. So uh, I was looking through the back issues and such. I found this, 10 bucks. Uh, looks like in very good condition. And it's amazing adult adventure. 
So from what I read up, from what I read up about this, this was printed. Uh, this was created for members of the military, uh, for them to read during their deployments and such. Obviously, from the tough guy and the tough broads, we've got the misfits and Dragonella. So let's open it up. Let's check it out. But look at that action-packed cover, and that's Canon, created by Wally Wood, fifteen cents, nineteen sixty-nine. Let's check it out. All right, so the cover also looks nice in the light. I don't see any real problems with it, so I'm happy with that. A uh, couple things here and there. Nope, it was fine. Ten bucks. All right, so I have not opened this at all, but it seems to be like the standard... Oh, there's some uh, water damage over there. Um, this is uh, the standard, like, uh, action hero sort of character art by Ditko and Wood. Uh, Steve Ditko and Wally Wood worked on this. Steve Ditko, of course, co-creator of Spider-Man. So, what do we have on the side over here? Fabulous Mesa Hills Western Home Sites. Your investment in tomorrow. Whoa, check this out. You never see this. Uh, buying property? Definitely this is much more for amazing, you know, for adults. And I would love to see, does this, did this community ever really exist? And uh, your own acreage in the heart of the West for as little as 35 cents. This is like fascinating, you know, service members in 1969 coming out of the service, seeing this ad here where you can buy your own home. You know, the baby boom was over by this time, right? Um, in the late 60s. So those coming back from Vietnam, Here's an ad, buy two and a half acres for cash, $495. You know, $495, amazing. Uh, please do the calculation and put it in the description about how much that actually is. But anyway, the comic. Without warning, at a top secret US uh, development center. You are sure she is the one? Good, let us be gone. So they're kidnapping someone, a scientist, I suppose. Uh, problematic. The caricatures here, of course, are leaning towards uh, very insensitive uh, for the modern times. I do not condone that. Uh, this is a product of its time, and it wasn't good then, and it's not good now. But we've got here Cannon. Let's see here. Uh, Cannon. He was captured by the Reds while on a spy plane flight. They gave him the most complete brainwashing ever done. He was returned to the States with the assignment of assassinating top scientists. Kill, kill, kill. But fortunately, his photo had been circulated among all the government agents, and he was spotted by CIA men. Uh, all the attempts to undo the brainwashing were, un were useless. It was too complete. Only one thing to do, go all the way. Okay, so they make him into a new killing machine. Look at this classic Jet Age, um, Johnny Quest style futurism. Uh, I don't think that's real Chinese there. I haven't uh, seen any characters like that unless they're using traditional Chinese, which I doubt. And uh, yeah, very action packed, very Johnny Quest. Great anatomy and posing. Uh, great close-up there. I wonder how much was Ditko and how much was Wood. Uh, it feels a little bit more Wood than Ditko. I don't quite know Ditko's style in the late 60s and the early 60s. I know it, of course, from early Spider-Man. But yeah, a lot of adventure, a lot of action, uh, very little clothing, and just this classic, like, I'm calling it the Johnny Quest style, but obviously Johnny Quest itself was pastiche of other things. Maybe this is an originator. From what, what I read about this, these comics were thought to be lost uh, for, for a while until the late 70s when a whole warehouse of them was discovered and the print run was apparently over 200,000. Buy with confidence from National Diamond Sales. No age limit, no red tape, send no money. So Action Man's Calendar, watch $16 monthly for $125 or some engagement ring. So that's really nice. You get out of the service, your lady's waiting for you. You've got some great rings. Classy. Visit a USO, your home away from home. Cool. So for our service members, they can go to the USO. Look to your future. Buy US savings bonds. Still promoting them in the late 60s. More 
common, I suppose, during the war, World War II, or I guess, what's the difference between war bonds and savings bonds? I'm sure there is. The Misfits. Uh, is that President Truman? Okay, so this is Wood and Reese. Gotta look up which Reese that is. 1969. Endless space, eternal void, silent and vast, seemingly as unchangeable as time, and yet one this day... Uh, on this day, the eyes of a stunned world witness a cosmic parad paradox. It just can't be. It's it's impossible. Yes, impossible, but it's there. A new planet in our solar system. Oh, snap. So they're going to go off and explore the new planet. Uh, is the Vision making a little surprise uh, visit? And uh, is he totally nude? Hey, that's an early... Dr. Manhattan analog. Uh, let's see. Who's this little chimp guy right here? Glom, a mutant. He must have broken loose. Um, so, classic cat suits. Uh, leaving nothing to the imagination. A little bit of print errors right there. Art on this also is very cool. Psychedelic. Steranko-esque and uh, great oh that's a good shot right there like then something snaps in her stop it's afraid afraid of me this creature that looks like a classic Marvel comic monster before uh, Marvel comics started to really do a lot of superheroes like all these great monsters like Kra and Goom and Groot so here's uh, Robots versus Monsters, classic. Then there's Dr. Manhattan, um, okay. And then finally, Crunch, uh-oh. That is not good. Your credit is good when you shop military diamond sales. What is this, uh, $249 both rings, a large fantastic diamond set in a useful modern 14 karat gold setting. Well, this is gold, I guess, but it's white, so interesting. Cool platinum blonde hair. We've got an open letter from the editor. This is your book. We want this book to succeed. To do that, we must please you. So, write, tell us. For instance, how about humor and girls? Could anyone like to see a couple of pages of gags? But you're the boss. If you want more, etc. Write to Armed Forces Distribution P.O. Box etc. Uh, Pleasant Hill, California. So, interesting. I wonder if you can still write to that and see what happens. And lastly, we have Dragonella. Script by Ron White and Wally Wood. Copyright Wally Wood. Once upon a time. Freeb, you've got a job to do. Uh, take this kid out in the woods and lose her. Yes, your cruel highness. Goo. Okay, so a uh, very busty uh, queen. And this is an analog for... Uh, uh, Snow White, go get rid of this kid. And uh, she's raised by these little creatures. The wizard uh, El Sprog de Freeb abandoned the baby to its fate. But it started to live with the uh, kindly dragons of the ancient family Isarius. Okay, so she grows up. And I guess uh, Prince Valiant ripoff over here. Hey, she's still alive. My, what a big girl she's grown to be, eh, Bascombe? Old fool. I'll send her a boyfriend. So, okay. Uh, cool art. I love the art on that horse. A lot of adventure, Prince Valiant action, a lot of smooching and gagging. And what lies in store for our heroine? Will she find her prince? And what a freeb. Does anyone really care? Can this be the end? Yes, this there was never issue number two. This, unfortunately, was a one-shot that failed. People did just not did, didn't, just did not respond to it. It didn't work. Uh, hey, that kid looks familiar there. Uh, it just didn't work, and um, it, uh, it, it had only one issue and kind of lost to the mists of time, and I got one at uh, at the Comic Fest, so that's amazing. More diamonds. Salute to Medal of Honor winner, uh, Corporal Robert E. O'Malley, U.S. Marine Corps. So cool, saluting 
uh, the president of the U.S. is awarded. Okay, so in 1969, that was Nixon, and uh, he's awarding this to Corporal, Corporal, Corporal Robert O'Malley. And then finally, at the end, the world's finest service ring, no down payment. So we have some uh, Army Special Forces, U.S. Army, U.S. Airborne, Air Force, Navy, uh, no Coast Guard. Uh, okay. And yeah, there's some damage here, which you can't see on the front. I don't see any damage on the front, so um, the cover looks great, but it does have those stains of water damage, especially in the back. So that's why it was at a very good price, but I'm happy with it. That was Heroes Inc. Presents Canon by Wally Wood, etc. And lastly, I'm really happy to get this. Popular Comics, number 138. And this is Felix the Cat. And uh, if you look right here, what does that say right there? Can you see that? A Dell Magazine, 10 cents. This is a Golden Age comic from 1947. This will be the oldest comic book that I own. I've owned, uh, I own comics from the 60s, uh, mid to late 60s. Um, I've got one from, I believe, 1957 uh, or 58. It's a Tom and Jerry book, also from Dell. But this is the oldest one, 1947. This is a 70-year-old comic book. What history must be in this book? Uh, it's not in perfect condition. There are some problems with it, but price was amazing. I, I also shaved off a little bit off of it. And um, let's check it out. This is the oldest comic book that I've ever owned. This will be great. Now, first of all, this is a Golden Age comic. So that means it's bigger than the modern comics. Uh, you see here, this one. Um, if you see on the corner here, this uh, from 1969 is smaller. And then this one from 1972 also is smaller. And then even a modern comic like this. So they would call them uh, magazines sometime, I suppose. Uh, but these are comics. And from the golden age, they were bigger. That's like half an inch bigger. So most of the uh, bags that I have, bags and boards don't fit. But I've got some golden age sizes. Okay, so uh, let's first do... The smell test. Mm, it smells like the golden age. So again, um, for the price, I'm happy. But there are a lot of imperfections. Uh, it's not glossy cover anymore. Um, you know, there's no shine to that look. There's no shine reflection in the in the camera. It's got, of course, it's been red. It's been in collections and. The, like the edge over here, there's a little, there's a lot of edge uh, damage over here. The uh, the staples uh, are intact. There's no detached pages, but there is a, a cut out here from the front. It, this part is detached from the uh, cover, but this other one is still intact. And so this is Dell Comics. They were publishing comics for a long time. This is Popular Comics number 138, also featuring Smiling Jack. I don't know if that's supposed to be ironic, because uh, that's not a smile, not even in 1947. Okay, so taking a look inside, this is pretty much reprints. Uh, reprints of, um, of, uh, of comic strips, because it says right here, Copyright 1940 by King Features. So it's a comic book from 1947. You can see the copyright right over... Let's see if I can get this all on the screen. Um, it says right here, Popular Comics, Volume 1, Number 138, August 1947. But it's reprints of comics. So let's see this fascinating indicia. Published monthly and copyright 1947, Dell. 149 Madison Avenue, New York. Chicago Advertising Office, etc. Michigan Avenue. Entered as Second Class Matters, December 1935. At the Post Office at New York. Under the Act of March 1879, additional second class entries at the post office at Poughkeepsie, New York, printed in the USA, subscriptions in the USA, $1 per year. So 12 issues, 
of this, which I believe is also 52 pages. So, 10 cents, 52 pages. Uh, this was the golden age of comics, even if they were reprints. Uh, copies, 10 cents. In Canada, $1.25 per year. Elsewhere, $2 per year. USA Patent Office trademark, 340,000. Patented at 340,000. Nowadays, these patents are in the millions under the act of February 1905. So we have Smokey Stover by Bill Holman. Love this art. Monochromatic, uh, classic uh, art. And uh, then even more classic over here, Felix the Cat. Doggone it, I'm tired of being a tramp. This adventurous life doesn't pay. Now back in the day, tramp meant something else. It meant a hobo or someone, uh, you know, homeless, but uh, more jovial, I suppose. And so here, Felix is having a bunch of fun scaring people and meeting a kid. The art on this is great. Uh, Felix kind of looks a little off uh, with a little human kid, but they become friends. They become newsies and make a whole bunch of money, you know, two cents. And then the cops show up and stuff happens and oh, homeless kid, that's so sad. He's, um, you know, cooking up a little hot dog uh, in the uh, back alley in the junkyard. Uh, not much for dinner tonight, Felix. One hot dog is all I could afford. Here's your half. What's the matter? Don't you want it? Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Does this end up with a with a happy uh, happy ending? Please tell me it does. So a bunch of stuff happens. A uh, bunch of stuff happens. Um, I guess the story continues. Because of Wishy's amazing success in selling papers, a reporter is sent to get his story. All right, so that kid's gonna become famous for selling a lot of papers. His name is Wishy. Uh, but there isn't any story. Felix just does tricks and people buy papers from us. What kind of tricks? Oh, just somersaults and backflips. Yeah, so a flipping cat and, and he tail spins and handstands and stuff like that. Nothing much. Nothing much. So yeah, that kid is famous because of Felix. And, uh, okay, to be continued. But, uh, what's going on here? Stick your hands up, I got you covered. Wishy McGraw never fails. Look, ain't they cute skinny playing cops and robbers? To be continued. Oh, to be continued. What happens in it? I'm gonna have to find uh, issue number 139 to figure out what happens. And we go over to Smiling Jack by Zach Mosley. Copyright 1944. Ooh la la. That's kind of a lot of skin there. And classic uh, 40s style caricatures, Dick Tracy-ish style. This sort of early... Uh, primitive, not in a negative way, but this early comic style of uh, characters. Like, this is much more caricatured, much more Disney style, uh, where this is, like, realistic, but kind of, like, not enough. That's kind of an uncanny valley. Like, the early comics are like this, like the early Batman, Superman are like this. So, uh, I suppose another caricature there. And, oh, snap, look at that sucker punch right there. This rat also got fooled by a petticoat and high heels, Joy. So, basically, these hoodlums, oh my god, they're going to Shanghai them. They're going to kidnap them. They throw sacks over the girls' heads. But the girls have had far more combat experience than their feminine appearance would lead one to believe. Hey, dirty nails, what kind of a wild cat cage did the boss send us into anyway? I thought it would like taking candy from a baby to rob these females but i believe we have locked horns with a couple of commandos and squates ow the coral princess lived along in the jungles and fought bad guys and tigers this rat also got fooled by a petticoat once uh once when i was broke and my child cherry was starving i took a job as a bouncer in a juke joint <laughs> i love that uh, not that, but I love the rest of all of that. Classic, look at that. She is kicking butt. And they fend off the bad guys. And someone gets drunk. All right, and a beautiful illustrated plane over here to be continued. Oh, I'm afraid his heart has stopped. <laughs> no, 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 we can't let him die. I found some ammonia. A few whips of this will be enough to to knock his cowling off. Cowling, like uh, Batman's cowl. Uh, another Smokey Stover, this one in full color, Bill Holman. So it's like what uh, little Abner sort of ripoff 
1944. Just a, a single page uh, comic strips over here. That's fun. Kind of interesting. Angular. It's got the style of Crazy Cat. Uh, reminds me a little bit of uh, early Dagwood. Dagwood Bumstead from Blondie. Uh, but these angular, uh, cartoony, you know, just classic 40s comic strips. Uh, not okay, man. And uh, there's a bunch of these. Okay, cool. Pause it and read it yourself. Have a laugh. From humor that's 70 years old. And we've got Terry. Oh, Terry and the Pilots by uh, Terry and the Pirates by Milton Caniff. So classic adventure tale. Uh, like a real... Uh, hmm. Like a real classic story full of very outdated things and great realism. Uh, Will Eisner style with no uh, speech but just visual communication. Someone getting kidnapped. Seems to be happening a lot. And uh, yep, um, this is the classic like really bad printing uh, from the point of view of the camera, it doesn't look so bad, I suppose. But in real life, you do see, like, uh, issues with the print. And, uh-oh, that's got a tear right there. Pat, remember the B-A-B-Y. All right, lots of adventures to be continued. And, uh, prose. The Great Black Ball. The first faint light of day was stealing through the Colombian jungle when Tomas finished milking his little red cow. This is from copyright 1947 by Robert and Calendar. There's an anteater, a cow, Tomas in Colombia. And uh, that ends at there. Okay, cool. Pause it and read it. Gangbusters. Copyright 1947, Philip Lord. Another realistic one. Ooh, I love that. Uh, classic here. Looks like a character uh, from Dick Tracy. Um, from the spirit and just action. This is just a manly comic. The diamond one eye, where is it? Things went wrong, Lips. I couldn't make the switch. Lips? Lips manly? Is this like a variation of Dick Tracy? Gangbusters? Hmm. And uh, some action beating up people. That guy's gonna get killed, thrown down the, uh, the well. He's gonna throw him in the well. Shh, he'll hear you. Gosh, look, he's dragging a body. Gee, a murder, just like in the movies. And uh, that takes care of you, you double-crosser. Oh, snap, he totally killed him. Come on, we gotta report this to the police. That's right, kids, report suspicious activity to the authorities. Sure, that's Maxted's glass eye. Holding someone's glass eye. And then the cops, look at that perfect aim. They blasted that uh, gun right out of his hand while he's coming through the the window amazing I, i'm liking this one a lot very realistic action-packed realistic uh, art style action-packed so much adventure gasoline alley classic by king uh 1941 reprint so gasoline alley uh yeah classic classic 1940s outdated uh problematic content now this is interesting i haven't seen an original uh gasoline alley in a while I'm, I'm used to the much later ones but it's got this sort of realism again amateurish sort of style better than i can do of course but i'm just saying the style in terms of it's not cartoony enough it's not realistic enough but um this seems like the story is realistic to a degree and more to be continued so they totally get you hooked you know i complain that nowadays these comics go on forever but look at this old comic where it had so many stories. Uh, they do have to be continued at, at the end of all of them, so you have to keep coming back. But uh, you get like a really long story for 10 cents in this great book. Uh, very different than nowadays. The Gumps. Chester bravely trying to reach the food and water laid a knapsack. He and Bill Moose left in the jungle is running direct. That's a lot. That's a run on sentence. Is running directly toward the deadfall the caveman has constructed to trap small game. <laughs> so that caveman is uh, the caveman. So this guy is like famous or something. Uh, this is kind of cool monochromatic, monochromatic uh, comic style. 
and that is actually the final okay that's the back cover and then that goes uh i guess it ends right there hooray this is the first good break we've had we'll fix up bull moose's sore leg with the first aid kit and the revel and the revolver may be a little protection from those big monsters it's by gliss epson and on the final back uh the next continuation of that story the gumps and a caveman with a gun not cool and then a dinosaur won't my friends have fun with this little fellow so i'm gonna kidnap a dinosaur well this this reminds me of uh, tintin isn't that that one um captain guy i don't know a lot of tintin and then tintin himself and snowy sure uh by gus or not gliss gus edson and there it is so on the back i gotta straighten these out a little later there it is the oldest comic that i own popular comics number 138 from 1947. So there you go, three comics that I bought at the San Diego Comic Fest 2019. Not a big haul, but I'm very happy with what I got. Uh, cop, uh, Archie comic from 1972, a Wally Wood comic from 1969, and a Golden Age comic from 1947. Uh, I paid in total $40 for all three of these. Uh, again, this is uh, not in the best condition, but it's a piece of history right here. Uh, these two are in a lot better condition. A little water damage on that one. This one's also very, very good. So I'm happy with the prices. I'm happy with what I what I got. I got to get them into new uh, into new bags and boards. Read them more thoroughly. Add them to my collection and uh, just uh, enjoy them. Uh, welcome them to my loving arms. If you liked this video, don't forget to. Uh, subscribe, to like, leave a comment. Uh, what do you think about these comics? Tell me what you think. Follow me on Twitter. Head on over to patreon.com slash vmcampos. I've got a lot of great stuff for free, as well as stuff that you can get for as little as a dollar at a $2 range. I will actually send you some vintage comics for my collection if you subscribe at the $2 range. I think that's a good deal. So this has been VM Campos. And I'll see you at the next San Diego Comic Fest.